so mad. I thought composting was this great thing. Now you're saying there's problems? What's going on? Well, <laughs> before you get out the pitchforks, hear me out. It's one of those caveats, one of those things that we got to talk about because one size does not fit all. And that's why it's so important to explore the full spectrum of what's possible when it comes to soil science. So let's get into this. Why is hot composting hard for a lot of people, um, not just some people? Well, it's physically demanding. Uh, when you're out there and you're, you're, you know, you're, you're taking that pitchfork and you're transferring things and you're shaking it out and, and it's heavy and maybe you didn't chop it finely enough so it's super difficult and it's, uh, it's all tied together and you might throw out your back. You might strain your back halfway through. Maybe you start off strong but you get tired out. When we have a compost heap that we're constantly trying to turn and we're just doing it ourselves, it can sometimes be really daunting. It can be a hard task. And if it's not conveniently close to the house, it can be even more difficult. So the physical side has its risks, it has its difficulties, and it is every other day for 15 days. And I mean, maybe, you know, like the first three days you're not turning it, but you're turning it a lot, you know, at least five times. And that's a lot of work. That's a physically demanding chore that you have to be monitoring the temperature. You have to be turning it when it gets too hot or too cold. And for some folks, they've got families, they've got schedules, they've got to bring people to places and, and bring people back and, and they've got jobs. And they miss those opportunities, those critical moments. They're not there to just baby a compost heap and they're, their pile doesn't turn out the way they liked because they weren't able to monitor it constantly, turn it constantly, either physically or time-wise. And then ingredient-wise, all wood chips are not the same. All sawdust is not the same. All, all, all chicken manure is not the same. So when we have these rules online where it's like, oh, this much for this, and all chicken manure is this much nitrogen, and yada 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 it's not quite accurate so when you design these things sometimes they burn up quicker sometimes they go sooner there's all this there is a fluidness to our response and play and artistry and you develop an eye for how these things are working and developing and you get good at it like anything but it's just not a hard and fast thing. So when we're like a third this, a third that, it, it totally changes what the greens are made of, what the browns are made of, and which manure, which nitrogen you're using. So is it bunny manure you're using or is it chicken manure? You know, is it chicken manure at a certain time of year? Is it chicken manure fe being fed off compost? Is it chicken manure eating just seeds? All of that will change the the consistency of the compost. It will change the heat that it gets to. It will change the end product. Um, everything plays a part and everything makes it unique. And understanding what makes it unique will allow you to predict what will happen. But at the same time, there's a great level of uncertainty. There's a great level of play. And so, again, there's not this uniform formula, formulaic result. There's a formula, you know, no doubt, but there's not a formulaic result. And so you've got to be able to add things in to slow down the nitrogen reaction. You have to be able to um, add more nitrogen in if it's cold, if it's not heating up fast enough. And being able to do this is all part of having these extra resources on hand ready to add in. And again, with hot composting, if you don't have those resources on hand and you don't take care of it in a timely fashion, 
and if you're not there to monitor it the whole day. You know, all these things go into it and make it make it harder for people to do a perfect job. And then you've got the actual compost heap. And are all sections of it, everything is being broken down evenly? No, actually everything is kind of in this process of this side, then that side. And you're turning inside and outside, inside, outside. You're turning the outside into the inside, the inside into the outside. That allows the compost heap to cover those spots, but is it perfect? No. And then at the end of it, we're testing, but unless you're putting it into a, like a compost tea and then looking at the compost tea as a, you know, a mixed aggregate, you're not going to get a clear picture as to what the whole pile is unless it's super uniform. So some folks have had great success with hot compost. Some folks have had complete disasters with hot compost. And there's more caveats, there's more details, there's more complexity that goes into it. And it really is an art. It really is a relationship that you develop with these ingredients. And you just develop this skill of working and, and monitoring. And But it does take that. And that's, that's really why hot composting is so hard. And that's why there are other options. That's why folks are like, I'm doing moldering. I'm just gonna leave it. And there are other people that are saying, you know, I'm gonna just feed it to my worms or feed it to my chickens or my ducks. And so when they do that, they, they're creating a, a pathway of decomposition that's through the guts of those animals instead of creating the decomposition of thermo, thermophilic uh, microbial digestion and through their waste and in the processes and cycles of that over and over and over again. And so it is a breakdown of digestion. And when we have that, it is this constant, you know, miniaturization of the animals and manures and stuff that creates that organic matter that becomes the food source and the housing and, and, and just the continuous cyclical foundation for all the life in the soil and all the animals above and in the soil. And it's, it's really miraculous, but we can also use effective microbes. We can use EM. We can use Bokashi, which someone called EM2 the other day. And I, it kind of tickled me. And I've, I've heard that before, but I hadn't realized that um, how closely related all this was. And they were talking about how they worked directly with Dr. Higa in developing Bokashi. And it was wild. He was a field worker for Dr. Higa and spreading EM um, to farms and, and governments all over the world. And it was really, really amazing. Uh, he's going to he's gonna share some of his data and some of his videos with me for the soil course and the soil book. Uh, there are more and more people joining us. William Padilla Brown, the citizen scientist and the cultivator, uh, the, the innovative cultivator of cordyceps uh, from the East Coast, uh, Mycosymbiotics, he is going to be joining us. I, I'm asking other folks that are amazing to join us in the peer reviewing and editor and advisor uh, roles because the more people we get into this conversation, the more fluency that we will arrive at. Because just like where this researcher who helped develop these protocols is going to speak about things in a different way than people who have been doing it and learning from people three steps down from this other different discipline from this other you know perspective it's going to give us this greater level of leverage with these principles at work and we're going to be able to innovate and by the way we weren't talking about Bokashi, we weren't talking about EM, we were talking about his new innovation. <laughs> and it's, it's this incredible progression that so many of these researchers and scientists and really microbiological partners, because we're partnering with the soil microbiology, the gut microbiology, we're all partnering with them in innovating new pathways for decomposition, for fertility, 
for health and 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 even pest control right where we can strengthen plants so they can fight you know the these the the pests off we're strength lots of things that we can do and it's it's this process of getting this out to the world getting this fluency out there working with these experts that i i'm just so excited about we're going to we're going to be able to change the world by helping each other change the way that we farm, the way that we grow food and raise animals, the way that we deal with our waste, the way that we work in our communities, the way that we design businesses, the way that we we use our food, the way that we, you know, ferment things. All these things are changing. All these things are unlocking new pathways and new understandings. And I hope that you're as excited as I am because there is so much more. I mean, I, people are like, Matt, you share so much information. You've given away these books. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go to the permaculturestudent.com and check out the books because I have books that are there for you. So I've, I've got free courses as well. I've got audiobooks. There's an audiobook on this channel that if you want to know like the basis for everything that I keep talking about, you're like, Matt, where is this information coming from? Check out the audiobook. Go to my main page on here. On if you're not if you're seeing this on another feed, go to the main page, Matt Powers, the Permaculture Student on YouTube, and scroll down and go to the audiobook and start listening. And you can get all the information and then it's all cited right there. So you can be looking at the page and be like, click, well, I'm gonna go here, and then you can download it on my website and keyword search it. You can click the live link and then go to the actual source material, read the actual thing that I read, go to the actual study and the science, everything, everything, it's all there. And that's probably why it's been accredited. It's the first accredited curriculum and program in North America by a government body. So I'm, I'm just stoked. <laughs> and so I hope that you are too, because there are, there are answers and solutions coming. We're gonna be able to deal with the radiation, the pollution, the glyphosate, the pesticides, the heavy metals. We're talking about taking care of it all, and we can. So join us. Click the link. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But if you want to learn how to do all this stuff, if you want to make this real in your life, join the, the Kickstarter. It's right now. We've got 11 days left. Maybe it's 10 days when you're looking at this. But that's, this is the, this, <laughs> this is the time. Join us. Sign up. There's free courses on my website. There's courses on the Kickstarter. There's free books on my website. There's incredible new books on the Kickstarter. Go check it all out. Get involved. It's all there for you to have an extraordinary life. So grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively. I'm Matt Powers. <laughs> Thank you so much.